Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ, and we'll get into to the nativity in Luke, Lord willing, of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Here is wisdom. And I have you to know, and I don't know what percentage, but there are people in this world today that don't believe what we're going to read. There are people in religions and even Bibles that deny the virgin birth. And let me tell you something. In order to be saved, you have to believe in the virgin birth. Now, that's one step the Catholics do have. They do believe in the virgin birth, but the problem is many of them, not all, they make the Virgin Mary, the Virgin Mary, capital letter, they make that a God. And we'll close with that at, at the end of this chapter. When as his mother, Mary, was a spouse engaged to Joseph. Before they came together, marriage bed relation. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. That's described in Luke chapter 1, when we get there. But the impregnation, if that's a word, if not, you can add it to the dictionary, is not that God had sex with Mary, like the Roman and Greek gods had sex with the, the mortals, is the pregnancy was of God. And don't know how. Was an egg even involved? Or just the fetus was put there? Luke will tell us it. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Joseph, her husband, Now notice the Bible does not and is clearly about Joseph. He is not the father of this baby. He will adopt this baby. But he is not the father. Mary is a human. God did the work of the womb of Jesus to be born. Jesus is 100% God, 100% man, but he is not conceived without man. Mary was a virgin. Being a just man, he was right, proper living. God would not use a carnal man. God would not use a slut woman. Most of your women today in the churches, God wouldn't choose. Not willing to make her a public example. That's old English spelling with a K. Nothing wrong with that. Some King James Bibles, they took the K off. That's perfectly proper. That's an old English spelling that they kept. And it's more proper because when you pronounce the word public, the C is silent, but the K is standing out. You know, when I grew up, my school, when they taught something, and my mother drilled me, sounded out. Well, some of the words... I sound out. That's not how they're spelled. But. Was minded to put her away privily. Divorce her. Mary somehow, uh, uh, she's showing. Because they didn't have those pregnancy tests. Maybe it was morning sickness. Maybe they'd done the rabbit. I don't know if they did that back then. 
But it comes to the knowledge of Joseph that his espoused wife, I said that proper, espoused wife, is pregnant. Now, Deuteronomy 24, this man is law abiding. Deuteronomy 24 1. When a man has taken a wife, there's Joseph and Mary, and married her. Look at that. She's a wife before they're married. That's why that woman that Jesus said, go tell your husband, he goes, I don't have a husband. Because that you have four of them. When you have a sexual encounter, even though you didn't have the certificate, you didn't have the license, you didn't stand before clergy, when you have a sexual encounter with somebody, fornication, God says, hey, that's marriage. And there are preachers and there are pastors who don't believe that. Flesh joining flesh. God said, that's a marriage. And it come to pass that she find no favor in his eye. She's pregnant. And Joseph's like, I don't. Because he found some uncleanness in her. She's pregnant. Then let her write at the bill of divorcement. I know a couple of preachers that hate that. Those that said un some uncleanness. He's seen her without her makeup. <laughs> oh, oh man, I, I read that today. There was a man. He he he, he just blew off his date because he actually saw her without her makeup. He's like, we're done. He finds out she can't cook. She can't clean. The law, the law prescribes a un uncleanness. Now Jesus will say for fornication. This is what the law said. Give it her hand and send her out of the house. So Joseph, I mean, if, you're, if your wife, if your spouse's wife comes home and she's pregnant, and you had no relations with her. Now, according to later on, not now, but the law right now, but according to when, when they challenged Jesus about divorce, Jesus said, except fornication. Now, this doesn't fit for Mary because there was no fornication. It was God. What had... A spouse, wife, or a wife had sexual relations, adultery. Even Jesus said, hey, that's a divorce. If you don't want to deal with it, and you don't want to, you know, you can forgive, but I mean, you can't forget, and jealousy and all that, you find the numbers. You can write here a bill of divorce. Now, I married a woman whose husband stepped out on her and a divorce. And a, a, a church found out she was divorced, never asked any questions. Well, no, you can't come here no more. Okay, thank you very much for not attending to the scriptures. May God not bless you no more. All right, so he's just, he's right, he knows the law. Matthew one twenty. But while he thought on these things, now look, look at it, he's prudent. He was thinking about, I'm going to divorce her. And then he's sitting back thinking. The you know, Bible doesn't say what, how, where, or what. This is, he thought. He didn't quickly react. He didn't jump to get the lawyers right away. Maybe, maybe he's praying. Behold the angel of the Lord. That angel of the Lord in the Bible, the Old Testament, that angel of the Lord 
And if you followed my study from Monday about that angel that visited Paul, that's Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? The baby that's in the womb of Mary. Old Testament, we're not in the old we're not in the New Testament, shows up to Joseph, her husband, as the angel of the Lord. Appeared to him in a dream. Now isn't that interesting? Do you know a man in the Old Testament whose practically entire life was associated with dreams? He himself, two prisoners in jail, and the king, the pharaoh? Joseph. <clears throat> Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, there's the king. Remember we, remember we looked at Previously, Matthew 1, there's the line, the adoption of Joseph, of Jesus. This is how official adoption is. Jesus is now, or will be when he's born, Jesus will have the inheritance to the throne of David through Joseph, not by the seed of Joseph, by the adoption of Joseph. In the state of Connecticut, where I am from, if you adopt a child, male or female, and let's say you get you have another child, whatever, and you adopt a child, and let's say that, that natural child that is yours by birth, right? And you say, you know what? I'm, get away from me. I disown you. I can't stand you. You're a rebel. You're and you can disown that child by law. You can write out a will and say, I don't want this child to have anything. You can do that. But the law of the state of Connecticut about adopted child is you have to put that child in your will. That child's name must appear in that will. And you can at no time say, I disinherit that child. That child, the adopted child, has more legal than a child of your loins. So the adoption of Joseph will bring him into the seed of David. It wouldn't bring him into the kingly line of, of, on Mary's behalf. Because Mary goes from David to Nathan. But from Mary and Joseph, he is of the family of David twice. Fear not. Those are two famous words of Jesus throughout his, his ministry. And when you hear the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, fear not, that's Jesus. And when you hear Jesus in this ministry, fear not. There was somebody in the Old Testament that used to say that. To take unto thee, watch, marry thy wife. Their spouse, God, Jesus said, hey, that's your wife. Now there has not been a physical joining together of Joseph and Mary. They're not bound to each other through the marriage bed. There has not been an official date set by Mary's family. The celebration, the, the marriage reception to unite Joseph and Mary together. Then Joseph would take her or the, the husband would take his wife. We call it the honeymoon. For that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. That's no other man. That's God. She shall bring forth a son. Oh, 
male or female, it's only changing today. I don't know how many sexes and identities you have, but male or female. And, and he says it's going to be a son. This is before ultrasound. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now, this is one of the few times in the Bible, like Isaac, John the Baptist, and I'm trying to think. There are a few cases in the Bible where a child has been pre-named by God. Ishmael. Has been pre-named by God. For he shall save his people. Bingo. Highlight that. He came unto his own, his own received him not. His people are not Gentiles. That's the clue in Matthew. His people are the Jews. Jesus is Jewish. His mother is Jewish. Uh, Luke chapter 3. Don't you go run and say the church. We're not his people. We are the bride of Jesus Christ, or we are the, the sons, the children of God. We're not a people. The people are ones who, who are outside the church. We are a called out assembly of believers. We are the children of God by adoption. Or we are the bride of Jesus Christ. We're never a people. And when you see his people, thy people, in the Old Testament, I know we're in the Old Testament now, I'm just saying, it, when you read the Old Testament, always, I mark my Bible when that phrase, or anything to do with Israel and the Jew, I mark with a blue highlighter. Anything to do with the Jewish people, I mark with a blue, I mark that blue. Whatever how you do it. From their sins, no Gentiles. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet. All right, so here's a prophet. We're going to look at Isaiah. Isaiah said it. No, the Lord said it. Isaiah recorded it. That's inspiration. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. That's impossible. But all things are possible with God. He shall bring forth a son. Now maybe this is enlightened Joseph. The, the, the God, Jesus, is quoting scripture. You imagine that moment when the angel of the Lord is speaking to Joseph. Man, you know, we've been hearing that scripture all these years. All these years we've been hearing Isaiah 7. And are you telling me that that woman that is my wife, she's the one? He's here? Imagine Simeon, Luke, when we come to Luke. Simeon says, Lord God, now let me die. You said I was going to live until I saw the redemption of Israel. I'm holding him in my hands. Now let me die. Now bring forth a son, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being God with us. So you take Jesus, Jehovah saved. Emmanuel, Jehovah is with us. Emmanuel is not a church name. Listen, listen, listen. The body of the church today, a group of people inside of a building today, Jesus Christ is standing outside the door. He's not in there with you. And if you got unsaved people in your congregation, 
God is not with them. If you've got a congregation that no one's saved, God ain't there. And there will be a time at the second advent, at the millennium, uh, yeah, the millennium and unto all eternity, a group of people called Jews, Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God will be with them forever. Do you realize if the Jews had would receive the Messiah in the book of Acts? Let's say, let's just say, they walk up to Jesus. We know it's you. We're sorry we crucified you. We repent. You are the Messiah. You are the one of God. And, and Jesus was saying, listen, what you did was scripture. There would be no church age period right now. There would be no seven period, seven church period. History and the future and now would be totally different. Something that with Jacob's trouble would have happened at that moment, the seven years. Because Israel still need to be punished for their sins. At the, seven, at the end of the seven years, Jesus would come back if they had received him. And he would take them and bring them in the promised land and set up the promised land. And the Gentiles that helped them in, the, in Jacob's trouble, that would be the only Gentiles that got saved. Don't you go run into Matthew saying this is church. It's not. Now, Isaiah 7.14. This is what was quoted. Isaiah is not a Christian book. Now, I had a preacher tell me, oh, you know, the, the Old Testament saints, were, they were Christians. And I said, in Acts, I don't know what the chapter and verse is, but Acts is they were first called Christians at Antioch. They weren't called Christians before Antioch. What do you do with that verse? And the crickets started cricketing, whatever they did. I, I thought it was funny. What was it? I was sitting like we had Hurricane Ian, Ian, whatever came through here. And it was the middle of the day. I'm sitting in my room and the wind's just blowing and the rain and on. And I heard crickets. I'm like, what are you guys doing out here in a hurricane? I just thought it was like, wow. I don't know if that's a sign from heaven. The rapture's going to happen. I hear crickets, but I thought that was amazing. Oh, they were hanging on to the leaves. <laughs> Uh, 714. Look at 13. Hear, O house of David. Who's Joseph of? Who was written in Matthew 1 in the house of? David. Behold, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The virgin birth is not for the Catholic Church. The, the virgin birth is for Israel. Israel requires a sign. The Gentiles seek after wisdom. So the birth of Jesus is on this wise. Still the birth of Jesus goes to the Gentiles. We got to believe in the birth of Jesus. Matthew 1, 18. But the whole virgin birth, which we have to believe, the, <coughs> the miracle of God is a sign to the Jews. And there's a point that some of the Jews told Jesus, at least we not be born of fornication. They didn't believe it. You know what they're saying about Mary, his mother? She was a hussy. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. 
Now, if your Bible, if your Bible, hearing this, and your Bible says, Behold a maiden. There's another word, I forget, another word too, I forget. I can't think of the word. If it does not say, Behold a virgin, kindly close that Bible. And go outside and put it in a bucket and burn it. And go down to the to your nearest bookstore if you can find one and get yourself a King James Bible. Because I'm telling you, a maiden. And there's, there's, there's maiden and there's another word, a very young girl. Well, let me tell you, in the United States of America, there are 13 and 14 year old girls who are getting pregnant today. That's no miracle. Now, when they wrote those Bibles in the early 1900s and the late 1800s, all right, 13 and 14 year old girls have, getting pregnant was a rarity. Not today. So if your Bible does not say virgin, get rid of it and get rid of it so that no one else could get it and read it. Destroy it. Shall conceive. Exactly what Matthew says. It doesn't say anything about a man, a male, a husband, or anything. And bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. So there's another name that's pre-named. Emmanuel is way back in Isaiah's time. Back to Matthew. You say, Matthew has an E, Isaiah has an I. There's that change of spelling from the Hebrew and the Greek. God is with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. And he took him his wife. And that's what he told him in verse 20. And he told him, verse 21 to 23, the prophecy about that child. And he knew her not. Okay, where do you get that? And Adam knew his wife and she bare Cain. And Cain went out and knew his wife and she bare Enoch. He did not have sex with Mary. Period. No. The Catholic Church would put period there. Now you realize if Mary was a perpetual virgin, that's what they say, the Catholic Church, then Joseph was a perpetual virgin. Do you know it was against the law for Mary to tell her husband, no, we're not having sex. They would not have ever been officially married without the marriage bed. You know, in the law, there's, I don't know how they do it, but I'm, I'm going to just tell you what the law says. A man could come and say, listen, my wife is not a virgin. And it said that the father and mother would bring the tokens of her virginity and I'm out of my league. That marriage night between a man and a woman, there was a lot more going together than getting a hotel room. And if Mary ever failed to, if any woman ever failed to tell her husband, no, we're not having sex, you can definitely go run to Deuteronomy 24-1. Hey, listen, my wife don't want to have sex with me. She does. Any, any, uh, can't say the word. Any uncleanness. She don't want to have sex with him. Excuse me, man. Do you not want to give sex to your husband? No, I do not want to give sex to that man. Okay. We'll give you a divorce. Goodbye. 
You mean I'm talking? Yeah, you are. You don't believe what my husband was, and that's perfectly fine. You should not have married him. That's why men go out and commit adultery. That's why men go looking, because you won't take care of him. If you took care of him at home, 95% chance he won't go be looking anywhere else. Listen, if a grocery store don't have the groceries he needs, you'll go somewhere else if you need it. Okay? I hope that's clean. He knew her not. That's the Catholic Church puts a period there. Till she had brought forth her firstborn son. So after Jesus was born... Mary and Joseph came together, husband and wife, and we will read later, they had other children. And he called his name Jesus. Now, that's that. Now, you'll get into more detail, and we're not going to get into it, Matthew, but if we, the Lord will, if we come to Luke, I think we've got 24 chapters in Matthew. So that's going to be like 40 days. And then, you know, we don't do it certain nights. And we got 16 chapters in Mark. That might be 30 days. And then the nights we don't do, hopefully we'll get to Luke. Lord willing. You never know what's going to happen, Lord willing. But it's plain and simple. Why do you need another Bible? What was so hard, <clears throat> except for all the names, what was so hard in Matthew chapter 1 that we got the kingly line of Jesus? We got the kingly line of David. And we got the conception and the relations of Mary and Joseph. That simple.